Hi, my name is James and in this physics video I'm going to be going over some of the basic definitions of different properties of materials. So our very first one is the definition of elastic and this is uh, a property where something will return back to its original shape once a tensile force is removed. Now a tensile force is just a force that I use to stretch an object. So when I stretch this not elastic band it's a hairband I've bought for my stepsister is because unfortunately there's no elastic bands in my house at the moment but when I stretch this I apply a tensile force to it and then once I remove that tensile, yeah, tensile force a little bit it returns back to its original shape so because of that it is elastic so obviously our next definition is going to be something that's inelastic and this is something that remains deformed after I've removed the tensile force so this would be something like a paper clip if I bend this, you can see there it's not uh, it's not bending back unless I push it, so it stays deformed. This is because it doesn't apply something called a restorative force. So this is just sort of the counter force you get when I apply um, my tensile force to something elastic. When I pull it up to a point, I'm still applying a tensile force to keep it this stretch and it's applying an equal and opposite force called a restorative force to keep it from um, stretching anymore. And once I start to remove the tensile force, the restorative force is greater because it's trying to stretch it back to its original shape. The atoms are you know, sort of joined together and they're all pulling themselves back together because they want to be in its original shape. And obviously the paper clip doesn't do that, it just stays deformed. So because of that, we've got two types of deformation. So deformation is just a change in like uh, some sort of physical characteristic away from what it should be. So in physics, it's just like a change in shape. So when I pull this elastic band, it goes from being this ring to being this long stretched out sort of, or you can stretch it out into any shape really, uh, that isn't a ring. Uh, but this is just a temporary change in sh uh, shape because it's something elastic being stretched. Now, this experience is plastic deformation because the change is permanent. So it's something inelastic that has a force applied to it and its change in shape is permanent. So instead of it being called inelastic deformation, physicists have been a bit more creative and they called it plastic deformation. So that's just something inelastic gets deformed and deformation is permanent. So you've obviously got different types of deformation. Like I said, I could stretch this elastic band into pretty much any shape I wanted. So I didn't have to stretch it from a circle to just two lines. I could stretch it into whatever I want. Uh, so something that's malleable is good for being deformed plastically under compression. So if I wanted to hammer something into a sheet for like a car door, to shape for a car door or something like that. Whereas something that's ductile, uh, you might want to use that for something like wires because that can be deformed plastically under tension, like where I pull this elastic band. But this is being deformed elastically, not plastically like we want. So if I pulled on a bit of copper, hopefully I could get some wire out of it by stretching it, by deforming it plastically into its new shape. But if something's stiff, then you're going to have a tough time deforming it at all. It requires quite a large force to just produce a small deformation. So for example, blue tack, that's not very stiff at all. Just by putting a little bit on it, I could produce quite a big deformation and just snap it with very little force, actually. How stiff something is, is measured on a scale called the Young's modulus. So something that's a high Young's modulus means that it's very stiff. It's, it needs a lot of force to produce a small deformation. I'm not going to be doing a video on this because this video is being released quite close to the exam so I'm just not going to have time because I've got other things to advise for but I will leave descriptions, um, not just descriptions, links in the description sorry, for other videos that you can watch on Young's Modulus that hopefully you can find quite helpful if you're watching this for a vision. Something that's brittle is just something that's just going to crack and break uh, but it doesn't really deform first. So if I take this biscuit and I apply some force, you can see it's not really doing anything if I apply a little bit of a force. Oh, and suddenly it breaks. So no deformation, and then suddenly it just cracks and breaks. So 
other materials can also be like that so obviously this elastic band is not brittle because it does deform but if instead of deforming I pulled the elastic band and it just snaps instead then it would be brittle something that's tough uh, is difficult to crack or break rather than quite easy so it can withstand dynamic loads uh, such as impacts so like a Kevlar vest that's going to stop a bullet but that's not because it's uh, necessarily got like a re like it's really strong but because it's good at dispersing the force so that's a different character so although some characteristics sound similar they are actually different so a Kevlar vest is very tough because it's good at dispersing the force around the entire object so it can with take a lot of dynamic loads including impacts like a bullet and then transfer the force to your ribs and break them uh, so again something that is hard is difficult to something similar like tough so that instead of being hard to crack or break hard just means it's difficult to scratch or indent so if you try to scratch or dent a diamond then you're not going to get very far unless you've got something that's made out of diamond like a diamond saw whereas something durable uh, retains all of these properties we've talked about so an elastic band is reason oh, well this hairband is reasonably durable because if I stretch it and stretch it over and over and over and over again eventually it'll deteriorate but for the most it's gonna stay quite elastic so it's not it is gonna retain its property of elasticity so diamonds the same if you hit a diamond with a hammer a thousand times then the thousand and first time isn't gonna get lucky because the diamond is no longer hard it's still hard because it's durable it retains this property after a lot of forces have been applied so it retains properties over a long period of time uh, the last two definitions is a smooth and a rough surface so smooth just means it doesn't produce very much friction so like this table produces uh, say quite a bit of friction but it's smoother than something like a bit of sandpaper which is very rough which is going to produce quite a lot of friction. It's going to produce very high levels of friction because it's a rough surface. So that's all for this video. I've gone through quite a lot of definitions, I think. Hopefully it'll be useful for revision if you're doing AS physics. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.